Hello everyone, Charcoal here, and welcome to another discussion video. What is world building? In the context we're discussing today, world building is simply when a fictional story reveals anything new about its setting that the reader didn't know before. In Wings of Fire specifically, this could be anything from exploring a new location on the map to learning some new history to seeing how a certain tribe society operates. A long time ago, way back in the Dragon Slayer rant, I said this. If there's anything I think Wings of Fire consistently does right, it's world building. It's been a couple years since then, and especially after making the Closer Look videos, my opinion on Wings of Fire's world building has changed a lot. There's some stuff that Tui does right, but there's also a lot she gets wrong, and that's what I want to talk about today. I'm going to take a look at all the good, the bad, and everything in between about how this dragon world is presented to us. I've divided this discussion into five major talking points. Number 1. Tribe Designs The designs for each tribe are a mixed bag in my opinion. There are some good ones, but I think the Pyrian tribes in particular look too similar to each other. They're easy to tell apart when fully colored, but color shouldn't be the main call sign of a tribe. I think it's way more interesting if each one has their own distinct silhouette, more unique shapes and features, that sort of thing. A few of the tribes I'm fine with. Nightwings are pretty much built like the most basic medieval dragon possible, but I'm actually okay with that, because I feel like a series about dragons should include at least one tribe with that kind of design, so it may as well be the Nightwings. And having a more basic design is kind of a trade-off for having access to their supernatural powers. Sandwings, and oddly enough, Mudwings are also good designs. The Sandwings have that sail on their backs along with their venomous tail, features that most of the other tribes don't have. And Mudwings have probably the most unique body type out of all the tribes, being super bulky with flat heads like crocodiles or alligators. The Silkwings and Hivewings stand out too with their unique wing shape, as do the Leafwings. Silk and Hive look a bit too similar to each other for my liking, but given they're both descended from the Beetlewings, I can mostly excuse that. I have seen some art of Silkwings being drawn as fluffy like moths though, which I think is a fun idea. Now let's touch on the tribes that could use something new. First of all, Icewings. They really need something besides being bright white and spiky. I've seen a few AUs where Icewings are fuzzy, kinda like a polar bear. I think it's appropriate for them to have some sort of insulation in such a cold climate, given that they are are, you know, reptiles. I know reptiles don't have fur, but screw it, it's a fantasy world so we can take some liberties with this. Let ice wings be fuzzy. On that topic, sky wings. Give them feathers. Give them bird wings, like a griffin. Their whole thing is flying really well, so why not let them look closer to what people picture when they think of a flying animal? Otherwise, they just look like another typical medieval dragon. They don't really have much else going for them. Sea wings are pretty fine on their own, but I'm just not buying those horns. Having horns that stick out like that when the rest of their body is designed to be as smooth and hydrodynamic as possible just seems like an odd choice. I feel like they should be pointed slightly downwards like the ice wings, or better yet, don't have horns at all. Not every dragon needs horns, and having fish gills on their necks is cool and all, but you know what's cooler? Axolotl gills. Get rid of their horns, make their necks perfectly normal and smooth like the rest of their body, and give them axolotl style gills where the head meets the neck. Also, why don't they have shark tails? That's the most obvious thing besides gills you could have given a fish dragon. Slap on a shark tail and you're golden. Rainwings could be another candidate for feathers like the Skywings, but I don't know, I like their ability to change colors too much. I think the Rainwings are good the way they are, but I would swap where the Rainwings and Leafwings live. Bring the Leafwings to Pyria and send the Rainwings over to the Poison Jungle. I feel like their respective powers fit more naturally in the opposite settings, and it would make it so each of them are a bit more distinct from the other tribes on each continent with their wing shapes. But that's all the tribes dealt with, let's move on. Number 2, History. Not as much to say about this one, but still worth mentioning, I think. Dragon history is all over the place. It goes so far back, and yet we know so little. Here are the major milestones. 20 years ago was when Queen Oasis died and the War of Sandwing Succession started. 50 years ago was when the Tree Wars on Pantala happened. 2,000 years ago was Darkstalker's time. I don't think we have an exact date for the Legend of the Hive, and I really don't feel like digging through the Flames of Hope again to find an answer, but I think it wouldn't have been that long after the Scorching, so we'll say it happened between 4,000 and 4,500 years ago. And of course, 5,000 years ago was the Scorching itself, when dragons overthrew humans as the dominant race on Pyria. But those milestones are basically all we have. Going back in time, once we pass the start of the Sandwing War, most of the Pyrian tribes fizzle out, except for the Mudwings maybe having a succession crisis of their own a few hundred years back. Only the Icewings, Seawings, and Nightwings really go back to Darkstalker's time, but then all of them stop after that. We know nothing about Pyria past this point besides a bit of what happened with the humans leading up to the Scorching, but we don't know anything about how the tribes settled after the Scorching or how the tribes came to be. There are millennia-wide gaps of information here, information that's probably common knowledge and taught in history classes in 
universe, but the reader is never shown any of it. And over on Pantala, we go from the Legend of the Hive to Clearsight's arrival to the Tree Wars, and that's about it. But on top of that, what completely breaks Pantala is the fact that all the Hive Wings are descended from Clearsight. Clearsight just showed up on Pantala and eventually bred an entire tribe out of existence? Really? The amount of kids Clearsight would have had to have! The inbreeding, it, it makes no sense! But, most of what we do see is pretty interesting, and to be fair, stuff is only going to be shown to us if it's important to the plot. But it's still annoying that after 15 books, 2 super editions, and 4 novellas, there are still these huge gaps of missing info that we know nothing about. Society doesn't go over a thousand years with nothing interesting to speak of, that just doesn't happen. Wait, society? Ah, perfect segue. Number 3, society. Here we go. Let's start with the Pyrian Kingdoms, where pretty much all of them may as well be exactly the same, with the only differences being minor ones that are just the most obvious thing related to their tribes or location. Skywings learn to fly at a young age, sea wings eat a lot of seafood and tropical stuff, sandwing towns are built around oases, etc. There are a couple exceptions, like the rain wings being pacifists, raising their kids communally and having a set time of day where they drop whatever they're doing and nap for a few hours. The ice wings have the circle system, or at least they had the circle system, but it was pretty interesting. And Mudwings operate in sibling units, which is something, but not nearly enough. Most of the Pyrian kingdoms just blend together because they only have one or two minor and or obvious traits each. On the Pantala side, it's better but not great. I like that it's distinctly different from Pyria, mainly with two tribes living together instead of having separate kingdoms, and what they're doing now with the Leaf Silk Kingdom seemingly being governed by an elected assembly. Although, again, why is it still called a kingdom if there's no monarchy? And Pantala seems to be much more technologically advanced than Pyria, with stuff like greenhouses, and apparently the existence of plumbing is hinted at once or twice. Also, religion. There were some hints of it on Pyria, but nothing major, but on Pantala, the Silkwings and Hivewings basically worship Clearsight as a deity. This is all well and good until you realize it's pretty much bringing Wings of Fire even closer to just copying our world. Speaking of just copying our world, weapons! Three moons, where do I begin with the weapons? Let's start with, why do these dragons just use nondescript metal swords and spears? Or in Book 10, why does Kibli want a poison dagger when he already has one built into his tail? These are dragons! Dragons with talons built for slashing! Why not lean into that? Give them gauntlets with blades on the fingers, or they seem to have decent control over their tails, how about pointed or bladed weapons made to be mounted on them? Queen Coral even wears a sharpened narwhal horn on her tail, why not go the full mile? And make the style of weapons more unique between the tribes. Draw on the environments they live in. Take Skywings, for example. They live in a mountain range. Mountains are rich in minerals. And out of all the tribes, Skywings are definitely the most in tune with fire. So boom, blacksmiths with tools made of some of the strongest metal on the continent. Or picture the Sandwings fashioning armor and weapons out of bones from prey they find in the desert. Or Sea Wings augmenting their weapons with shark teeth. Or Mud Wings wearing armor made from alligator hide. How cool would that have been? A friend and I came up with all of this in 10 minutes. Couldn't Tui have included some stuff like this? I'm not even asking for flawless combat practicality, I just want something with more thought put into it than pulling stuff straight from the human world. So yeah, the kingdoms don't have enough to properly set them apart from each other, and Wings of Fire is really riding that line of just being the human world but with dragons instead. I'll admit, a big part of why I'm ranting so much about this is because I simply enjoy complaining about every minor thing that annoys me. But there is one more big issue to cover, and this is what I would say is the root of the overall problem. The biggest reason why so many tribes are underdeveloped. Number 4, the focus problem. Without a doubt, Wings of Fire has a huge problem of focusing way too much on some tribes and not nearly enough on others. Let's go over how much focus each tribe gets in each arc. In Arc 1, we had a book with a Mudwing protagonist but was way more about the Skywings, a book about the Sea Wings, a book about the Rain Wings, a book about the Night Wings, and a book about the Sand Wings. Mudwings and Ice Wings were touched on briefly, but they really took a backseat compared to the others. So when Arc 2 rolled around, this could have been their time to get some proper development. So what did we get? Another Nightwing book, the Icewing book we had been waiting for, a Skywing book, another Seawing book, another Sandwing book, and an entire super edition about the Nightwings, Icewings, and Seawings. This time around, the Rainwings take a bit of a backseat, although we do visit the Rainforest a couple times, and the Mudwings get shafted AGAIN. I'm okay with how much focus the Icewings got here because they got so little in the last arc, but why Nightwings and Sandwings? Those two were pretty much the centers of attention in Arc 1, so they should have been pushed to the side to give the less developed tribes room to grow. Now we look at Arc 3, which is all over the place. The three new tribes get one book each, all well and good, but then we get another super edition about humans for some reason, and then we go back to the Icewings before wrapping everything up. 
I'm tired of ranting about humans, so I'll just say this. Stop adding new elements to the world when the stuff you already have still needs fleshing out, because then it just feels cluttered with a lot of stuff that's barely interesting. And if you thought we would get a break from the Nightwings this arc, you'd be wrong, because Clear Sight is basically the cornerstone of the entire conflict. Even across the ocean, we can't escape the Nightwings. And I think this speaks to a much bigger issue with Pantala. The third arc felt like it was meant to be a soft reboot to give Wings of Fire a fresh start to bring in new readers, so we got a whole new setting that wasn't focused on nearly enough because Tui kept trying to tie it back into existing stuff that new readers wouldn't understand and old readers are already familiar with and tired of. Pantala failed to really stand out as its own thing, and the insistence of focusing on Pyria means that there are huge areas of Pantala we never see. What's by Beetle Lake? Or Lake Scorpion? Or Dragonfly Bay? Or this area up here in the northwest? That looks like an entire mountain range, that could be good for something. But no, we hardly explore any of that. If the main series continues, and honestly that's a really big if, what I want most is something that at the very least isn't tied to the Nightwings. Please, I'm sick of them. This uneven focus has landed us with some tribes that are super developed and others that we barely know anything about. What makes this even more frustrating is that the framework for something really great is right there, but not nearly enough is done with it. And I think that's why so many people create alternate universes for this series, because there's so much left open that we have to fill in ourselves. At the very least, I guess it gives people in the fandom some room to flex their creativity, but we still shouldn't have to answer so much with our own interpretation. Wings of Fire's world building is very flawed and full of holes, but there is a potential solution. Number 5. How to fix this mess. As cool as a lot of the prior suggestions would be, we obviously can't change what's already been established, so let's look at how we can improve on what's already here. I believe the solution to Wings of Fire's world-building problem lies in the winglets, short stories that shed some light on characters that didn't get as much attention in the main series. Four of these were released throughout 2015 and 2016, and most of them are good stories, but if you take a look at the protagonists of each one, you notice a trend. Prisoners? Nightwing. Assassin? Also a Nightwing. Deserter? Sandwing. Runaway? Two Ice wings and, you guessed it, another Nightwing. These are all tribes that we've seen a lot before already, but the idea of more winglets has a lot of potential to touch on some of the other tribes. If a concept for one of the underdeveloped tribes is too small to fit in the main arc, write a winglet about it. Heck, I can already name a pair of Mudwing siblings who could really use their own winglet sooner or later, hint hint. And this is where I should bring up A Guide to the Dragon World, Wings of Fire's official lore book set to release in October of this year. It promises to answer a lot of the questions people have about the history and details of this series, and don't get me wrong, I'm hyped for this thing, but I'm worried about how much info is going to be presented by just saying it to us. I would much rather have new information be presented through storytelling, and reviving the winglets would give us just that. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. But if being part of this fandom for so long has taught me anything, it's that if Tui won't give us what we want, then we'll just work with what we have and do the rest ourselves. And that's about it. This was a really fun one to make, and I hope you had fun watching it. Time for fan art. Today we have pieces from Narziss, T-Rex, Cat Tilme, Wings of Dawn, and Leopard Dusk. Thanks a bunch guys, this has been Wings of Charcoal, and I'll see you all in the next video.